very commonly when a patient is undergoing fertility therapy from all good fertility units across the country of India, you are going to get a phone call from the embryologist telling you how many embryos you formed and what was the grade of the embryo that you got, right? As a patient, because multiple grades are mentioned, the first thing which a patient does is Googles it, YouTubes it, ChatGPT is it and identifies what type of questions should they be asking their own embryologist, correct? Here I am presenting a simple pictogram of how a good day five embryo would look. We will try to run through some of the things which as a patient or as a fertility practitioner or as an embryologist or a biologist you should know when it comes to counseling the patient about it. This video will benefit you to have a basic understanding of how a morphological grading is done for the embryo. Morphology means how do we look at the embryo and how do we grade the embryo. One disclaimer, a good appearing embryo may or may not be chromosomally normal and just because an embryo is appearing very good, it doesn't mean that the patient will become pregnant in that IVF cycle. Just keep this much in mind. Second, you cannot judge the age of the contributing partners. That means the male partner or the female partner when you look at the embryo. And third, it is very important to look at the embryo based on the time at which this embryo is formed. For example, is it a day 5 embryo or a day 6 embryo or a day 7 embryo? That really should be your counselling points. But let's go through the image and we will help you as to what you should know and how you can question. So this is what a typical photograph of an embryo is going to be presented to you about. Alright, let me just mark out certain things for you. This part is called as the ICM. ICM means inner cell mass. Okay. So it means that's the part which is going to give rise to formation of an actual embryo. These cells which you see here, which I am marking in black color, are basically called as TE. That's trough ectoderm cells. Okay. That's something which is going to help you form your placenta. This thing inside is the cavity. That means where, you know, the fluid from all these cells which are discharging has collected inside. And this guy here, this covering here is called as ZP. ZP also stands for Zona Pellucida. Now, as a patient, just remember one thing. We are going to be grading based on the structure of the ICM, based on the structure and appearance of the trophectoderm cells and also sometimes on the thickness of the Zona Pellucida. This otherwise looks to be a great embryo but it is important as I told you for us to understand if it is a day 5 embryo or a day 6 embryo technically that doesn't really matter much as far as the implantation is concerned it doesn't really matter much just remember one thing the best embryo is somewhere between 110 to 120 hours post ICSI that is something which is important which you have to note which you have to understand of course, your biologist or your embryologist is going to present this information to you. Can I look at this embryo and just say that this is a great embryo and you know I'm going to become pregnant immediately? The answer is no. We can give you a technical answer that when you have a good quality embryo like this, on an average as a patient, you can have around 40 to 50 percent implantation rate, but that's about it. It is also going to be dependent on other factors like the uterus, the age of the patient, the technical stability, what protocol is used, hundreds of other things. If you don't form an embryo like this, does it mean that something is wrong? So guys, just remember, majority of the standard practice across the world is to make sure that a patient forms a blastocyst embryo. That's a day five embryo. That is the standard practice. There is that little debate in between doing day two, day three embryos versus day five embryos. And some people would advocate doing day two and day three embryos, which are having, you know, four cells, six cells and eight cells, especially when the patient has formed just two or three such embryos, low AMH or something like that. But a reasoning to that is that, you know, they don't want to give the external incubator and they want to put these embryos in a natural incubator. That is the uterus. It is a matter of concern and debate going on over the last 10 years. So let's not dwell into that because it will keep on changing based on the studies which would keep on coming. 
this is all that you need to know about your blastocyst this is how the reporting is going to be this is how the photos are going to be if at all you are given photos it's not mandatory to give photos to all the patients especially in india what what happens is you are going to be given a printed report and the printed report would usually measure the expansion which is you know typically going to be noted by numbers 3 4 5 something like that it is then going to look at the inner cell mass and it is going to be graded based on a b c something like that and of course the trough ectoderm as well and even the trough ectoderm is going to be graded on you know a b c so you will have these sort of numbers 4 b b 4 a b 4 b c 4 c b whatever right and that is what you are going to be having a juggernaut in your brain but overall remember that this is what you need to know and inform if you are a patient who has formed a blastocyst embryo and is worried about the grading of this embryo